Thank you, Chair Chairman. Uh, I watched carefully what you were saying, and I think I uh, understood that you missed one decisive point, pretty well. I'm an entrepreneur. Ah, <laughs> it was not here. <laughs> the fault is on that. I, I guess you were an entrepreneur. Yes, um, and uh, I steered in the fourth generation, my family owned company. Now my son is in the fifth generation. Just to have the background, because who is not uh, having steered a company cannot be a perfect representative with the feeling of that what companies are needing, particularly as a small and medium sized mm -hmm. companies. Uh, in big companies, okay, you can be a manager, whatever, you can come from university and they will train you, but in a small and medium sized company, you have to fight. Yeah. To fight for customs, to fight for innovation, for education, and, and, and as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, uh, this is a core question. Um, competitiveness and quality of products and services. And I want to add innovation. And innovation needs best educated talents. And that's one of the big advantages of your country. Um, well educated and well skilled young people. Uh, we will never win a, 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 in a global competition with low prices or protection of high customs and tariffs. We only will win if we have innovative products and are quicker than others at the point of sale. And that's worldwide competition. And we are, as Euro Chamber, in favor for free competition. America has been till two years, three years ago. Now we are putting the flag in our hands. Free competition. Access to all markets, but with fair conditions. With fair conditions doesn't mean that we are open, for example, the belt and road of Chinese, but uh, as normal roads, they are not one way. They should also um, be uh, open in the other way around. When Chinese are investing in Greece and buying a harbor of Piraeus, for example, and building a railroad, um, through Europe and uh, also uh, gaining um, subsidies from European Union because uh, according to the regulation infrastructure is uh, supported, then I want the same way the other way around too. And if Chinese are uh, demanding to become the most strongest economy around the world, okay, but then they have to cope with the regulation of this world. Um, and uh, there's a lot to do. I say it because we shouldn't only ask ourselves, we in Europe, what can we make better? You in Latin America, what can you make better? Also, those who have an approach should ask themselves what should they can make better. And those who are disturbing the world today, influencing so many countries, also Argentina, also Europe, should rethink if they are, it's a good advice to have perhaps one or two benefits, but destroying so much instability and confidence um, around the world. And uh, I'm sure I have here a clear opinion. Yes, they are throwing, um, destroying a lot. And not only in economic respects, not only in political respects. They are destroying a kind of um, partnership. We were
we are appreciating in the past. Uh, America did a lot of good things, but uh, now they are destroying so much of its um, of its uh, um, positive results of the past. I want to tell you a little bit why I'm here. The occasion was to go to the B20 preparation uh, for the G20 summit here in Buenos Aires in November. And uh, I think uh, it is well organized by the T B20. Uh, Mr. Rioja did, uh, I think, in my view, a great job. Uh, we are in a close relation what free trade and other priorities are. We had a discussion today uh, at lunch. And uh, I think that uh, we fit together because the B20 are more the big companies. And I'm representing the small and medium sized companies in the chamber system. As a, as a federation of industry, very important, no doubt, the flagships. But the flagships without many small and medium sized boats around uh, cannot win a war. And uh, therefore, we and our USB are the 100 million companies in the global chamber platform, which is partner of B20. 100 million. 100 million. With 1 billion employees. That's a responsibility. Uh, and uh, it and to, to bear this responsibility, you have to ask yourself, what can we do? And in the last decade, um, although there was a, a crisis of 08, 09, but in the last decade, the gap between a small, rich population share and a huge, very poor population in many countries were not closed but reduced. In India, for example, three or four hundred million people they are in the so-called middle standing. In China similar. In other countries too. Brazil. 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 Yes. Uh, and uh, also the former very, very poor, let's say Bangladesh. Yeah? Uh, today have a very impressive performance and also in Africa. That means globalization <coughs> with all also negative impact. But in, uh, in the result and the saldo, it was positive. And it created a network of cooperation around the world. The main failure of uh, Donald Trump is only to see the saldo in the good relation, in the trade relation of goods. If he is accounting also the services, and if he is seeing the interdependencies in the network, he would come to other conclusions. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, perhaps he's aware of that, but it's not fitting in his strategy. Uh, to, like an American brutal businessman, batch where the weaknesses of the others, go in, make a huge clash, and then afterwards, is, if all is laying down, and say, so come, and our, I have a solution. Yeah. And uh, making also political uh, impression to his constituents in, in the Middle West, wherever. <laughs> okay. Uh, global Chamber Platform is therefore for free trade. Global Chamber Platform is also 
because we are worldwide lacking of skilled people, also in China. In China, the wages are raising annually in the uh, coastal area where the economy is prospering in average 15% per year. Uh, and therefore, the Chinese government wants to invest in the central areas. Um, but anyway, we are lacking skilled people around the world. But we have a lot of unemployed people, young people, without perspectives. And I think it's a crime to have young people without life perspectives. What is their future? What are they doing? Uh, we know that many um, IS and terroristic organizations are recruiting from these disappointed young people, promising a lot and uh, giving perspectives and uh, appealing to ideals and, and, and. We have the responsibility for the young people. As your chamber, uh, as you have mentioned in your brilliant report, um, we have 46 uh, national organizations, chamber organizations. Um, 46, that means not only European Union, but uh, a European business community. Um, and I'm very proud of that because we know that we have a lot of political queries. Um, Ukraine, Russia, Turkey. And it's better to have them in the chamber and in the business family than to have them outside because if they are inside, you can have a dialogue and in the dialect develop understanding. Um, and, uh, and foster bilateral trade. What is connecting people in our times? Culture, science and economy. Are all, of, are all other sectors. Sport is very national organized, yeah, there are emotions. Um, religion, okay, it's up to you to find a, an opinion and politics with them. So, and therefore we have to strengthen these positive forces in the globalized world. They have a major responsibility. We have to educate young people and that's our demand and our priority in Euro Chamber and in the Chamber system. I always am asking, you have to deliver. And you have to deliver so that the broad population is acknowledging that what you are doing. If broad population is acknowledging, then also politics is. We in Austria and in Europe, education of people, not in the national level, but we have 1,700 regional and local chambers. And they are close to the uh, companies, 20 million companies. And, um, and uh, they should do it, like we in Austria have proved to do, or in Germany, because they are celebrating today the national holiday. They did a great job in that. Um, and uh, that's number one. Number two is a priority, access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises. It's a, a, a big uh, um, issue also here in Argentine uh, with the high interest rates which uh, can small companies not afford. Um, Third, we all are discussing digitalization. What are we doing? What are the best arguments? What are the best uh, practices? How can we exchange uh, our experiences in that? The next is 
how to deal with worldwide refugees. That's not Latin America. Yes, it's also Latin America. Venezuela. Venezuela, yeah. Uh, and we have Africa. Yes. To the tablet, they see, oh, that's a good living standard, therefore we go because we have no life perspective in our continent. Refugees, not only in economic respects, also in climate change. And therefore, I am so happy that Argentina is involved in um, um, environmental questions, in sustainable um, uh, economy. Uh, we need a new kind of circle economy. That means uh, not only uh, produce and, and produce also waste, but to bring waste in a circle and uh, um, bring it back to new production, new products. Sustain. Sustain. That's, that's it. And that's what we as, as, as chambers are fighting for. And uh, each chamber has a different access. Uh, some chambers have uh, also parts of infrastructure, for example in Spain they have ports and airports and exhibition areas, whatever. What they are doing is up to them, but they have to do so that they are respected. Mm -hmm. Only to complain that they are asked what are you doing, giving no answer, but complain that they are uh, cut in, in monetary effects, that's too less. And, um, that's what I'm clear address. We have to demand ourselves. Yes, and uh, uh, finally, we have to contribute also uh, to politics. If you see the European unification <coughs> process from the very beginning, and economy gave instruments for the unification. The Coal and steel union was uh, made on, uh, the, to avoid a future war between Germany and France, and coal and steel were the major war um, resources. Therefore, a supranational um, institution was made, and then uh, developed the European Economic Cooperation. Uh, the European Free Trade Association, uh, Eurozone, uh, Maastricht, um, uh, uh, Currency Union, Banking Union, uh, and, and, and. Um, Schengen, free movement of goods and services, and, and. We are not perfect, no doubt, but we have uh, realized some important steps in that way. And our task is also to say, okay, what is the future income? What should we contribute in the future? And what is our role in the uh, development process of Europe? Europe is a success story, but will it remain a success story? Uh, we are seeing what's going on in China, how they are doing. Uh, they have another uh, political system, but they are able to make quick decisions. We in Europe and other parts of the world are hindered by bureaucracy, over-regulation. How can we combine democratic system with quick decision possibilities? That we have to answer, because we are not only in a competition, of economy, we are also in a competition of, um, of uh, governance. And Chinese people want to prove till 2049, it seems to be very long, but you know, time's passing by, to be the best regulatory system around the world. But we also have to prove till uh, 2049, because it's the 100 year um, jubilee, not only of the 
Marx revolution in China, but also of the foundation of the Council of Europe as the fundamental of European law and European culture and European values. Uh, how can Europe proceed? We are at the moment 28 countries. Some want to enter um, in the southeast European uh, area. The focus is very, very clear with 90% uh, support of the population in direction of Europe. Others, like UK, uh, are discussing about their future. They have no answers. They are discussing till today. And the newest uh, uh, um, news are so that uh, things are buried. I, I, I see no, no, clear, no, no clear opinion. They want to remain where they have advantages. Horizon 2020, for example, or access to the single market, but only with goods, not with services. It's not possible. It's not possible. European has clear rules, and who is fitting together with the rules is welcome. And who not? Okay, it's his own decision. And uh, my personal opinion is uh, that they never have arrived in the political Europe. And we need to deepen the European Union um, in many sectors of politics. Uh, currency is made, uh, European um, uh, uh, financial system, uh, European um, uh, trading and foreign trading system, and, 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 and also in the security. And um, we have to deepen uh, that we are visible uh, and able to act in the globalized world more than today. Um, and so we have to um, think what can we contribute. My opinion in the UK cases, they never have arrived politically, but they always have uh, prospered uh, in the economic case. 50% of the UK exports are going into European Union. Only 5% from European Union into UK. Um, and my suggestion is uh, economically remain and politically leave. Very simple. In a customs union, stay in a, in a single market, uh, consume the transition period for the labor market, one of the major questions. Yes, in the beginning when, when uh, the new members were adopted in the European Union, um, many countries like Austria, Germany had a transition period on the labor market. UK did not consume it. Okay, give it them with a delay now. It's no problem. And in 10 years, the world is completely changed. That means in economy we are used to have a plan B with creativity. What's now the case is that all parties are defining red lines. And the red lines are so defined that the compromise is not possible and if possible then uh, only a, a free trade agreement like with Canada or whatever. But uh, UK will not be happy with that. They want to be in the uh, world's biggest um, research and development program, Horizon 2020. Uh, they want to be in the security system. They want to be implemented also in the services because they have a banking sector. They want to go out and at the same time want to stay, and that's not possible. 
that's not possible. Therefore, politically and economically separated, but or with clear consequences that mean politically not to be member of the commission, not to have members in the parliament, not to have uh, decisions, it's like no weight, so to say. Uh, and also pay for the benefits uh, in the single market. Okay, if they want that, if not, then not. But um, that was uh, Boris Johnson is asking a hard Brexit. He's, he's not aware what he is suggesting. If I would in my company um, do against all reason, such suggestions, I would go to jail. He will go to well-funded pension. That's the difference. Therefore, uh, and I think uh, the opinion in UK has has changed, but they don't know in what direction. Nobody wants a hard Brexit. Nobody wants from the people, because they are aware that they have to pay to win, mm -hmm. and not the politicians. OK, let's wait and see what's, what's coming. Uh, when I say free trade agreement, then certainly Mercosur is a topic, uh, also for Euro Chamber. Uh, we have tomorrow a meeting with uh, Ayo Kamala. Um, as an umbrella organization of bilateral chamber organizations. Yes, because we have, if we have an agreement, we, we need also partners to deal with each other, uh, to say what can we do, concrete realization, um, not only in uh, declarations. Businessmen are used to realize not to declare themselves. And we're ready also to, to, uh, to help SMEs and make joint ventures and investments and, and, and. and after, and I hope that there's a window of opportunity open now, and uh, I hope uh, politicians will make it, as your Secretary of State was uh, telling, not the technicians. Politicians now should say, yes, finish. It's very easy. Yes, finish. And then afterwards, uh, we should have two major projects. The one is OECD for Argentina. Uh, and uh, the second is to reform the WTO to uh, bring back its uh, acting possibility. Yes, together with the Americans, but if they don't want, okay, then without them. Well, we will not wait and we will not uh, get into pressure by them. Um, but that means that we have to clarify also our relations with other continents. That means Latin America, that means Africa, that means Asia. Uh, in Asia, there is the ASEAN is uh, very, very impressive. Um, try to uh, make a regional cooperation with 600 million inhabitants, huge market. Indonesia is the biggest country out of them. Uh, and, and naturally, as I mentioned in the beginning, China. Know that we have a lot, a lot to do, and the chamber system serve the people, serve the country, and also have the a uh, great view on continental cooperation and worldwide cooperation. And that's what we are doing, what we are trying um, with our uh, expertise, but much more with our engagement. And um, I hope that uh, with a country like Argentina, which has has so similar philosophy because not only of the common history but also 
in the question of the presence and in the ideas for the future. We are much more closer uh, to each other than we are aware ourselves. And I say it also, yes, also in Europe. And therefore, this visit for me is of greatest importance because I will give the message, look, we have here reliable partners. They are uh, in the same philosophy. They are, they have some problems. They will solve the problems uh, because they are on the right track. Uh, congratulations also to IMF decision because that's um, that's a, a kind of appreciation of the way you are going. Yeah, uh, and that's an investment because if one is going the right way and he has problems, you should help him. Uh, if one is going the wrong way, you need not help him because that's a waste of money. I think that's well investment, invested money and I'm looking forward that uh, you will come out from the turbulences, out from the bad luck you have had with the uh, throat um, uh, problems and agriculture and, and, and. Um, I hope that uh, tourism industry will prosper and uh, we have in Austria a lot of uh, experience in that sector um, and, and, and. But I'm very optimistic. Uh, uh, and there was a song, Don't Cry Argentina. Thank you. And, um, and uh, I think uh, there is nothing to cry but a lot to afford, and together we can make it better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.